once you get all those the sandpaper lines gone get you some napkins and get you some setups and you want some little squares like that that you can dispose of use ones and dispose of them so don't put anything here in the in the background or in the foreground that you don't want to get um, CA glue all over it a little bit of CA glue right there make sure it gets plenty of that once you got it on there turn it on and get away from from anything away from it that you don't want to get glue on you do that it splashes everywhere once you got it on there thick you hit, hit it with this that's it give it a second or two it'll be dry that's dry already well, it's not 100% dry, but it's pretty much dry where to the touch. And you put an, another coat on it. Get rid of that first one. Get you a new one. And do it again. And you can do this three or four times. Now you got the now you got the, the activator on there, so it's gonna go faster. Once you got an activator on there, that's the next coat is gonna it's gonna go on there a lot faster. So if you leave it on there too long, it'll take the paper, paper will get hung up on it. Blast it again. Give it about 30 seconds and repeat. first pen I did this and I got these little welts from the CA glue and I didn't sand down far enough to get rid of those so you can still see them so I'm gonna go back and redo that pen um, I was just trying to get more experience on this and that should be dry already and I think that's the third one and I'll do one more You can always go back once you sand it down if you don't like the if you don't like how it's coming out you can always go back and add some more but I'll, i add about four maybe five at the most coats but i know some people out there will add up to eight coats so it depends on what you want um at this point you can wet these if you want you got protection against the wood it's not going to allow the wood to uh to get wet now, you don't want a whole bunch of water on there but a little bit of water won't hurt it i'm not going to use it i'm just going to use straight sandpaper here you can see I'm already scuffing it up it'll start to get dull getting dull at this point you can see the dullness and then you can see that 
the indentations that are going they're still shiny you want to get rid of all those shiny spots so that so that you have a complete uh, smooth surface all right I had to I had to ditch this this part of the of the mandrel this this got locked up and um, started burning into that but luckily that little piece right there I, I lubed it up I put some I had some of this grease on there so I put that on there Let's see. had some of this grease so I put some on on the end on the bearing and luckily this this bushing fit right on that and so I'm using that now um, I polished it down one more time and I notice I got I may have some metal particles from the from the bushing inside I'm not sure got to look at that real close Yeah, I think I'm going to leave it like that. Let's do the other one. I won't bore you with the process for the other one because it's pretty much the same, just repeat it. All right, let's put this together. This is what we have. It's the top. This is the bottom. When you press these, you got to make sure they're centered. If not, it'll get all cockeyed and it gets complicated. So, if you do it with clamps like I'm doing right here, you got to kind of turn it around and press it a little bit and turn around because these clamps are not completely straight. This is what I'm doing right now. These clamps tend to press a little more on the, on the front. So, put that side there. It's not the best press for this, but this is what I have, so we got to work what we have. There we go. That does it.
that's not too bad. Give it one more little squeeze right there, I think. That's what I was going for. The next one is we'll do the top on this side. It's like this section here is not straight. I gotta sand off a little bit on this side.
There she goes. Tip in, tip out. Hope you like.